The scripture reading tonight will be from 2 Chronicles 26, 16 through 19. <clears throat> but when he became strong, his heart was so proud that he acted corruptly, and he was unfaithful to the Lord his God. And he entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Then Azariah the priest entered after him, and with him eighty priests of the Lord, valiant men. They, appro- they opposed Uzziah the king and said to him, It is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who are concentrate- consecrated to burn incense. Get out of the sanctuary, for you have been unfaithful and will have no honor from the Lord God. But Uzziah, with a censer in his hand for burning incense, was enraged. And while he was enraged with the priest, the leprosy broke out on his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord, beside the altar of incense. Epitaphs can range from whimsical, funny, to sometimes thought-provoking. You know, I remember, this goes all the way back to when I was in high school, I was on a band trip in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and some of us went to the Ripley's Believe It or Not place, and they had this room, and it was just full of, like, a graveyard. It was it was built like that and had these different little sayings in there. I just remember one, and it stuck with me all these years. And it was it was funny because it said, "Here lies the dentist, the mill, in the largest cavity he'll ever fill." So that might I don't know if that's actually on anybody's real grave out there. It was there in that particular case. So you can have some that are kind of funny on tombstones. Maybe the one that you've heard before that is maybe a little more thought provoking. And apparently it has appeared on a, new, a number of tombstones from the 1800s. It says, remember me as you passed by, as you are now, so was I. As I am now, so you must be. Prepare for death and follow me. Um, certainly a thought-provoking tombstone if you're walking by it and reading that and thinking about, yeah, I will be there one day and coming to that reality. One of my favorites is by the man that wrote the the words to the song Amazing Grace. A man named Newton, John Newton, who was uh, an atheist, at least initially. He was a man who was the captain of a slave ship. And it took almost dying in a shipwreck to change his life. And he changed his life and he left the slave trade. And, and the, the music to Amazing Grace comes, came from the singing that he heard in the hold of his slave ship. And he wrote that song that everybody knows, probably one of the most well-known Christian songs that there is, Amazing Grace. But on his tombstone, he had written this. John Newton clerk, once an infidel and libertine, a server of slavers in Africa, was by, mercy, by, was by the mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ preserved, restored, pardoned, and appointed to preach the faith he had lo- labored so long to destroy. He basically summed up his whole life on his tombstone, of where he had been, where he had come to, and what he had done in his life, good, bad, and indifferent. And, and so, I, you know, when you think about those, you, you kind of go, you know, that's something to make us think about our lives. If we were to walk into the cemetery of Old Testament characters, there would be a point where we would come across a small tombstone And all that tombstone would say on it is he is a leper. That would be it. And it would be the grave of King Uzziah. 
2 Chronicles 26, from where we read just a moment ago, if you want to turn in there, all of our texts that will be from there. We see first Uzziah as a youth, that in verses 1 through 3, he was a descendant of David, he was a descendant of Solomon through Rehoboam. He became king at the age of 16 years old. His father Amaziah, he was one of those good and bad. <laughs> he started good, and he didn't end so well. Uh, but he was kind of a good and bad king, which Uzziah is going to follow in his footsteps in that respect as well. Uzziah got off to a very good start as a king and, and seems to have been had a personal friendship or a personal relationship at any rate with the prophet Isaiah. We know that Isaiah, uh, in his well-known Isaiah chapter 6, where he has the vision of the throne room of God, uh, there and he, you know, he cries out in that moment, I, I'm an unclean man, I live among an unclean people. And uh, a coal is placed on his lips to sanctify him. But that was written in the days of Uzziah as that chapter begins. We also see that Uzziah was a powerful king in verses 6 through 15. He was strong, he conquered many of his enemies, conquered the Philistines, he made, them, he made many nations pay tribute to him. Militarily, he was an exceptional military king. He was organized, his army was strong, and as you read through the text, you see that he was inventive. In other words, he came up with very uh, smart and inventive ways to defend the city of Jerusalem uh, to uh, function as an army. And so he was very well known in regard to what he did militarily as well. And he also, it says there in the text, he was known throughout the world. So what Uzziah had done, you know, I think oftentimes we think about these, the, you know, the, the ones that are most famous would be the Pharaohs and the, and the Babylonian kings and different things of that nature. But it seems that in this particular moment of time, when Uzziah is first king, he becomes famous throughout the world as the king of Israel. And so that's kind of a unique thing for him. That's not something that's often said in regard to kings of Israel. Probably Solomon would be another one that would fall into that kind of category because of his conquest and because of the wealth that he had and the wisdom that he had. But we go through all of that, and then we see Uzziah rebel against God. In verses 16 through 18, Uzziah becomes full of pride, probably because of his success. Probably because of all the things that he had and all the praise that he got. I guess you could almost say that he began to read his own press clippings, right? And began to believe them. And, and sometimes we see that. People become famous. They, they begin to believe everything that's said about them. And it usually leads to their downfall. But he used his position, this, this fame that he had, his position as king. He thought he could use that position to bypass the laws of God. Uzziah didn't want to only be king. Uzziah wanted the one position in Israel that was denied him, and that was priest. To be able to offer incense in the temple of God. Notice what it says in verse 16, but when he became strong, his heart was so proud, and he acted corruptly, corruptly, and he was unfaithful, to the Lord. And he walks into the temple. He's got a censer in hand. He walks into the temple. He's going to offer incense there in the temple of God. And you've got to give Azariah, the chief priest, some credit, don't you? Folks, it's a dangerous thing to oppose a king. It's an even more dangerous thing to oppose a powerful king, a king with a great military, a king that's well known. But I want you to note there, when it says that Azariah opposed him with 80 priests, note what is then said about the priests. They were valiant men. That's Bible speak for soldiers. It has every appearance in the world that Azariah was ready to fight. And I don't know if King Uzziah came with his armed men, but Azariah had 80 men that were able to use a sword and they were going to stand in his path and oppose him. And Azariah begged him 
not to do what he was doing. He said, It is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated to burn incense. Get out of the sanctuary, for you have been unfaithful and will have no honor from the Lord God. Boy, you've got to hand it to Azariah. He's kind of one of those guys that he's stuck in this story about Uzziah, but he's really the story, isn't he? He's the man. Standing there, opposing the king and saying, this isn't for you. And ready to do what is necessary to stop it. Verse 19 tells us that the king was enraged. And so the king didn't like being opposed. He did. And how many times do you think King Uzziah heard no in his, in his reign? I guarantee you not often. This is probably the only thing in all of Israel that if Uzziah said, I want that he was told no to. And he became enraged. And we see God punish him. You know, God, he doesn't allow there to be a bloodbath in the temple. God doesn't allow Azariah and those priests to be victims of uh, probably more experienced soldiers that might come into play if, if they truly oppose Uzziah with arms. He says in verse 19, but Uzziah with the censer in his hand for burning incense was enraged. And while he was enraged with the priest, it almost seems like he's just about ready to do something to him, right? While he was enraged at the priest, the leprosy broke out on his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord beside the altar of incense. And Azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked at him, and behold, he was leprous on his forehead. And they hurried him out of there, and he himself also hastened to get out because the Lord had smitten him. King Uzziah was a leper to the day of his death, and he lived in a separate house being a leper, for he was cut off from the house of the Lord, and Jotham his son was over the king's house judging the people of the land. So... God causes leprosy to appear on his head. Well, I can tell you what's going through Azariah's mind and the other priest. We've got to get him out of here. This is a consecrated place, and he's about to make it unclean. He's got to go. And so they're rushing him out. But even he seems to be now fully aware, you know, how proud his heart was. Now he realizes he's done a step too far, right? And he's hoping, I think, that only leprosy happens to him at this particular point. He certainly understands the history in the nation, right? That something worse can happen to you when you start doing things in the temple or the tabernacle that you're not supposed to, like Nadab and Abihu. You can come away with a whole lot worse than some leprosy on your head. And so he realizes he has displeased the Lord, and he's ready to get out too, right? I'm done. That's enough. It's good enough. So he flees. But that moment of pride... That moment of, I'm going to do what I want to do, cost him. It wasn't a few days. It wasn't like Miriam, when Miriam said, we're just as good as Moses. And God struck her with leprosy for a time. No, the leprosy would never go away for Uzziah. He would spend the rest of his days isolated away from the people. He would spend the rest of his days away and alone with the leprosy that he received there that day from God. And when he died, he was buried. And verse 23 tells us that written on, his, on the stone was he is a leper. As famous as he was, as powerful as he was, as smart as he was, as good a king as he had been, all that was remembered was when he put himself against God. And the gravestone said he is a leper. If you died today, what words would be an appropriate epitaph for your grave? He or she is a, what would it be? What would it say? For Uzziah, it was leper. Would it say that he or she is a successful business person? He or she is a famous person. 
He or she was busy. He or she was incredibly smart. Maybe like a Solomon. He or she was wise. Maybe he or she was a rich person. You know, when you think about that, Uzziah was every one of those things. All of those things could have been put on his tombstone. But it was he as a leper. That's what ended up defining him. Or would your tombstone today say, he or she is a faithful Christian? Really, I, I think that any of us as children of God, that would be the one thing that would mean everything. The one thing that we'd want all generations to know about us, past us, the people that would never know who we are, as they walked by, that was a Christian. That was a person who gave themselves to God. That was a person who did what the Bible said. And I guarantee you, I promise you, and when they put you in the ground one day, that is the only thing that will matter is whether you were. It won't matter how smart you were, how rich you were, how good you were at business, how good you were at this or that. It will only matter, were they a faithful Christian? May that be on our tombstone. Uzziah started well, but he ended poorly. And I encourage you this evening to not only start well, (laughs) but end well. End well. End as you began. Start strong, end strong for God. When God blesses you, always remember that it was God that blessed you. You know, that that always seems to be the problem. God blessed Uzziah. God blessed Solomon, didn't he? Remember Solomon in that great prayer? Solomon started great. Solomon... Just tell me what you want. Ask anything of me. God, give me the wisdom to judge your people. And then God gave him so much more than just the wisdom. He blessed him with incredible wealth. But somewhere along the way, Solomon forgot that God made him that. That God gave him that. And he went astray. King Hezekiah as one of the best kings that there was in all of Judah toward the end of his life became proud of all that he had and was showing it off to the to the ambassadors of of Babylon he had forgotten that that wasn't his that God had given him that Uzziah blessed Wealthy, powerful, forgot that God gave him that and thought he would take what wasn't his to be taken from God. And he suffered the punishment for it. So as we go through this life, may we always remember that what we have and what we've been blessed with are from God. And that that will keep our pride where it needs to be. It'll keep us humble. It'll remind us that this isn't because I'm so great. It's because the God I serve is so great. That's Abraham. Abraham was probably one of the wealthiest men of his day. God blessed him over and over and over with wealth. And it never went to Abraham's head. He never thought, how great am I? He always thought, how great was God? And he was always looking for that city whose builder and maker was God. See, there's a difference in attitude with how we deal with God's blessings. Uzziah failed miserably. Solomon failed miserably. Hezekiah failed miserably. Abraham gives us the example of always remembering that what I have, God gave to me. And that always keeps your pride in check. So this evening, as we think about the man who became a leper, Stay faithful. Stay in a proper place in your understanding in regard to what God has done for you. 
keeping your life in a place of humility and serve Him strong to the end of your days. Don't start strong and fall apart at the end. Don't, as Paul talked about, serve God and then give it all away and be lost. Serve God all the way to the point that there's a tombstone over you and may it say, He is a Christian. We can help you this evening on that journey. We'll pray that you will let us. Why don't you come as we stand as we sing.